right, in today's tutorial, we're gonna go over pockets and I've supplied a link in the description for this solid model that we're gonna use. So we can go ahead and import that. I'm gonna to navigate to where my solid file is and it's actually a step file, but I refer to them as solid files. So part 10, rev one, let's go ahead and import that. Take a look and we can see that we're not lined up to our work coordinate system. Uh, one thing I want to check is the distance from the top to our work coordinate system and we just need to adjust the Z down three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and apply. Um, Oops, I put a copy instead of move. Not a big deal. All right, so we have a solid model on our work coordinate system. Perfect. I'm going to go to view. I'm going to turn off the gnome. And we're going to go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to go to machine, mill, default. And then I'm going to expand the properties. Go to my stock setup. Add bounding box. I'm going to select the cursor at manual. I'm going to select my solid model and there we have it. It generated our stock for us. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK. So we're going to do a couple different things. I'm going to show how you can plunge into material with the helix and then also if you pre-drill a hole you could plunge in through your drill hole. So I'm going to go to wireframe and I'm going to select a point and then I'm going to go to top and I'm going to go ahead and just put a point here right in the middle. It's uh, it's not too critical where you put the point as long as you're far enough away from the uh, edges of your pocket for your um, and mill to come down and clean all that up. So I'm going to click OK on that and then I'm just going to go ahead and do a generic helix down pocket. So let's go to our tool paths and I'm going to select our pocket tool path. So I'm going to select um, loop and we're going to select this big pocket first, right? I'm going to select OK. I'm going to go to Tool. I'm going to create a tool. I'm going to create a flat end mill, a half inch standard is fine. I'm going to spin that at 7 grand and 60 IPM. And for the plunge, 60. It's going to helix in so we can go ahead and have it going pretty quickly on the plunge. For uh, cut parameters, I do want climb. It's going to be a standard pocket on this one. And I'm going to leave zero stock on the walls and zero stock on the floors. And then for roughing, I like to use the parallel spiral. 50% um, step over is going to be fine for this. And step over distance is just based off your percentage there. So we could go ahead and go into our entry motion. We have a helix. And I'm going to make that helix a little bit smaller. I'm going to put 25 to 35 percent. Z clearance 100 and X. I'm going to go ahead and put that at a quarter inch. Keep it away. And then for plunge angle, uh, three degrees is going to be fine. So for finishing, I'm going to turn on our aware and I'm going to have it finish up with a 20 thou. And for a lead in, lead out, we have tangent. I'm going to put a 55%, 55%, 90 degrees is fine. And I'm just going to transfer that over to our exit. I'm going to put 100 thou overlap on there. Uh, for depth cuts, we don't need depth cuts on here. And linking parameters, we have our retract at 250. 
I'm gonna put that at absolute and feed plane absolute at 100. Uh, top stock is zero and depth is incremental zero to the chain that we selected. So it's determined our um, depth based off of the geometry we selected on the 3D model. Or you could go to absolute and select your depth to the base of that, which is uh, 5 eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And there we could see we have our entry helix right here. And then it's going to clean up our pocket. And then it's going to do a finish pass around the, the contour. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and do another pocket. And we're going to base this off the floor here. And I'm going to click OK. Tool, same tool. Seven grand at 60, and I'm also going to do 60. And then for uh, cut parameters, it is another standard pocket, and we have zero stock on the walls and floors. For roughing parallel spiral, our entry motion is the same. Uh, finishing should be the same as last time we set it up. And for this, we have a smaller pocket, so I'm going to change that to 25% on both the uh, length and radius. And for linking parameters, we have an absolute depth. We don't want it, uh, that we want to go a little bit lower. So it looks like it already got it. So top of stock is zero. However, all this material is removed, so we don't need it to uh, helix from the top. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the top of our pocket here. And then I'm going to select Apply, and then I'm going to select OK. So you can see that it did not have... Um, let me hide this top toolpath here. Okay. So I didn't have enough room to do the helix, right? So let's go ahead and go into our entry motion and let's put 50 thou on the walls and see if it'll generate it for us. And we could also tidy up our uh, helix a bit. I'm gonna do 15% to 25% and select okay. And there we go, we do have our helix now. All right. Perfect, so we have the big pocket, we have this little pocket, and then we have this pocket where we're assumed to have a pilot hole to drop our uh, end mill into, which is, um, if you're using a half inch end mill, you could use a 9 16th drill bit to get through that. So I'm gonna select pocket, I'm gonna select the bottom. The arrow direction's not too critical on pockets, it knows that it's a closed chain. So in our tool, we have 7,000, 60 IPM, and for plunge rate, we can go ahead and do 100. Entry motion, we don't have an entry motion anymore. So in finishing, it's all the same. And lead in, lead out, we want to use an entry point and an exit point. Actually, the exit point's not too critical on here. So in linking parameters, we should have the same thing. And also, uh, top of stock is going to be the same thing as we did last time. You're going to select the top surface of your pocket. So I'm going to click Apply, and then I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to go to Geometry, and I'm going to Add. And what I want to do is go into my wireframe, and I just want to select the point here. And I will drag that point to the top of our Chain Manager and click OK. And then I'll regenerate that, and you can see that our um, our uh, pledge coordinate is going to be where our pilot hole is, right? Okay, cool. 
And another thing that you could do with pockets is open pockets, which it will be this chain on the side. So let's go ahead and select another pocket. And we're going to go back to our 3D and we're going to do a partial. So what you want to do is select one of these chains and then another one. I don't think it's reading what I'm doing here. Okay, so you see that um, it's selected this chain. That's not going to work for us. So my arrows were in the wrong direction. So there, that arrow is in the right direction now. So when I click this other side, we have our partial chain. I'm going to select OK on that. And tool, uh, half inch in mill again. And we'll go ahead and do seven grand on the spindle and 60 IPM. And for plunge rate, we can go ahead and do 100. It shouldn't plunge into any material. In cut parameters, we're going to switch this over to an open pocket. And we're also going to use an open pocket strategy. And we're going to have the tool stick out um, 5 eighths. So it shouldn't plunge into any material and then work its way from the outside inwards. And for roughing, it doesn't really give you a whole lot of options here with the uh, open open pocket cutting method. So we're going to go ahead and our entry motion is off. And finishing will be the same. Our lead in, lead out is going to be, um, we could leave it the same or we could get rid of the arc and the sweep and send it over and actually change this to 55%. So the tool will, uh, won't um, plunge down into any material and start from the outside of the pocket and then move its way inward. So for linking parameters, it's all the same things and our new depth is a quarter of an inch. Perfect. I'm going to click apply and then I'm going to click OK. And then we can see that our, um, well, it's hard to tell. So I'm going to hide all of these and then just turn on our open pocket. So we could see where the tool drops down and then works its way inwards and then our lead and lead out for the finishes. So I'm going to select my toolpath group one and then I'm going to select verify. And then we could see how we did with our pockets. Let me right click, get the isometric view. We'll drag this into the center. I'm going to slow it down and put it to performance and we can now see how it works. So it's doing its helix down. It's not showing it very well. And then it's going to hog out all this material for us. And then we have that pocket down there and then our no helix pocket and our open pocket on the side there. So that's a basic overrun on how you can do uh, pocket tool paths in Mastercam. And thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Have a good one. Bye.